Hi, everybody. Welcome to this edition of Small Business Insider Live, a live stream program hosted by the Small Business and Entrepreneurship Council, specifically for business owners, entrepreneurs, and anyone interested in small business policy. My name is Christy Arslan, and I am SBE Council's Entrepreneur in Residence. I am also a small business owner here in Alexandria, Virginia, and we're very excited to have with us today the president of SB Council, Karen Kerrigan. Karen has been a longtime advocate for small business and her organization is a membership organization that works with small business owners to ensure a economic climate and a policy climate that benefits entrepreneurship and small business. Karen, thanks for joining us. Oh, it's great to be here. Um, and thank you, uh, Christy, for bringing us together again. And, you know, I just like to say that you know, this is an organization of, you know, small business owners and members, and we have a really big network. So it's their organization, it's your organization, and, um, you know, we love engaging with you. And, um, you know, I hope to have a great discussion today about healthcare because it is a critical issue for business owners and entrepreneurs. That's right. We're talking about a hot topic today. If you've um, picked up a newspaper or turned on the news, I'm sure you've heard about. Um, the House Republican leadership's efforts to replace Obamacare. Uh, they introduced one of their first pieces of legislation in their overall plan to repeal and replace Obamacare. And and one of the pieces of or the piece of legislation is known as the American Health Care Act. We'll probably call it AHCA. So if you hear that acronym, that's what we're, <laughs> that's what we're referring to. Um, but before we get into some specifics about the bill, Karen, because yes. we definitely want to know how it's going to impact small business owners, can you share with the business owners who are listening with us today about the approach that the Republican leadership is going to be taking to replace Obamacare? What What's their outline for getting this done? Well, you know, actually, it's happening right now. Action is occurring, and we're, we're pretty much uh, uh, far along in the process, actually, you know, on the House side. Um, if anyone, uh, you know, turned on the TV, they probably saw, if they've been following the issue, they probably saw, um, you know, Paul Ryan with his sleeves rolled up in front of a PowerPoint presentation, I think trying to be, um, you know, helpful in educating uh, not only his members um, uh, in the House, but also the public and the media about the planned approach to uh, repeal and replace Obamacare. And essentially, you know, what they're doing is this. Um, it is sort of, sort of a, a three-phase uh, process. It actually is happening concurrently, and it's a staggered, I guess, is the best way that I could put it. Um, the one piece that uh, tackles a lot of the tax uh, and related budget issues um, is being has been packaged in, in, in one piece, and that um, is because they wanted to actually get it through the Senate through the reconciliation process, and it has to relate to tax and budget issues according to Senate rules. And the reason why they're doing that is they felt that, you know, if they did put together a big repeal uh, and replace legislation in one big package, or even just repealed Obamacare outright, that actually they wouldn't be able to get it through uh, the Senate, um, you know, that there would be, um, uh, well, they have to get 60 votes, and, and, and they feel they don't have that. So taking the tax and budget pieces first uh, or in one package and passing them through, um, uh, uh, they felt was the best approach to actually get things done. The other parts of it are, are also moving through the House as we speak as well. Um, what they call the, the competitive um, uh, piece of this. And that is to you know, help, improve, help improve the environment to make the market more competitive um, and do things from a legislative perspective that are going to give uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, and individuals more choice in the system. So, for example, um, you're going to have four different pieces of legislation on the House floor next week that um, include, for example, uh, what's called small business pooling or association health plans, the ability to give business groups like us, if we wanted to, the opportunity to pool our membership uh, so that we can negotiate with insurance companies for lower prices, you know, mm -hmm. for our members. The other thing, um, so that's one piece of uh, legislation that already, you know, has passed committee. It will be on the floor next week. 
Uh, another one is a, uh, it's called the, um, uh, I got it, let me just refer to my notes right here, the Competitive Health Insurance Act, which essentially eliminates some of the antitrust protections that insurance companies were given 70 years ago and really had nothing to do with the market and protecting them from competition, but more for data sharing. But they had to pass this, this antitrust provision. So passing that then would make the market um, again, a little bit more competitive so that you can have new entrants uh, and that the same antitrust provisions that are applied to other sectors are provided to insurance companies. So that's sort of like this multifaceted mm -hmm. you know, legislative approach. And then the last thing is, of course, you have an HHS secretary now um, who's in office, uh, Dr. Tom Price, who is gonna be looking at administrative um, opportunities uh, to um, fix regulations, to roll back regulations, to see what he could do to revise reg regulations, reduce red tape, what he could do from an administrative pers perspective, you know, again, to relieve burden and to make the markets more competitive. So am I ex explaining this correctly to you? Because I know a lot of people are like, well, why can't you do it all at once? Yeah. yeah. And I think the, um, the, the House leadership is looking at one, the political realities, of actually getting something through the Senate, um, and um, you know, also uh, the rules. From a rule perspective, what could they do that would not only repeal some things, but also um, they could begin to re replace things uh, on a current concurrent basis in some pieces of legislation, but they have to do it through other pieces as well. Got it. Is that helpful? Am I expect? You know, I know I'm. I'm I'm sort of an inside the beltway gal, <laughs> and I try to discuss this in layman's terms, but um, there's even confusion with members of Congress uh, on this, and people in the administration and people in the media. Um, and if you're not following this and all the moving parts, I know it can be a little complex. Yeah, so to recap, um, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> I can hear that hearing this clearly is that um, there's sort of three different excuse me, sorry, a little back tweet there. There's three different um, kind of approaches or different ways they're handling this. And so this bill that they just came out, the American Healthcare Act handles all of the um, tax and budget related stuff. Is that correct, Karen? Yes, and some of the, yes, exactly. Um, okay. You know, not only sort of repealing of the taxes, but also making changes to the subsidies, the tax credits, um, Medicaid, uh, mm -hmm. Those types of things that relate to government spending, um, as well as uh, taxes. Yes. And so that's the first step. And the reason why they packaged those together was because of the way the rules work in both in the Senate in particular, in order to get that passed um, with such close majorities in the Senate, they need to use a special tool, they call it reconciliation, to get that passed with a simple majority and not have to get the full 60 votes they needed. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I think really that the Republicans were, um, they and President Trump ran on this promise. And so they're interested in speed, you know, in actually getting this done mm -hmm. and, um, you know, getting, getting, you know, checking this off the list before they move to other things. I mean, certainly they're doing other things. He's signing legislation. Um, but, uh, but then, you know, following this, they want to get the tax reform. So yeah. they're interested in speed, but they're also looking at the political ra realities of how mm -hmm. they, do this, um, you know, on a, an accelerated basis. And then in conjunction with this particular bill, they're also working on ways to make the market more competitive through, you know, buying across state lines and other mechanisms, as well as um, giving HHS Secretary Price a lot of leeway to make some changes in the marketplace as well, administrative fixes to make it more competitive and help bring costs down. Is that correct? That's correct. And it's all happening now. So it's been yeah. being, being done on a concurrent basis. The other bill that will be voted on next week is actually a medical liability reform bill as well uh, that passed committee. Um, and, you know, that's something that doctors have been calling for, for for a long time because they do a lot of defensive medicine that actually drives up the cost of care. So that's yet another piece that will be voted on next week. 
yeah, so it sounds like it's very important for small business owners to know that there's a lot of moving parts going on, yes. um, not just the American Health Care Act, but a lot of other pieces of legislation and administrative efforts to help address uh, Obamacare replacement to ensure that we get a marketplace that's more competitive and cost effective or affordable for business owners. Well, that's absolutely right. You know, and, and in our e-news, I mean, we, 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 we try to keep up with this and we, we try to do a recap. You know, we package it together, but we'll have a big recap, if you will, this week that sort of covers where we are right now uh, on the American Health Care Act, as well as, um, you know, these other pieces as well. And also some of the things that we're fighting for, you know, the things that we're working on that we think make sense. I mean, there's other things that we could do to give um, business owners more choice in the system immediately. So um, let's let's talk about this this bill, the one that everyone's talking about, the American Health Care Act. Can you share with us a little bit about how it will impact small business and then also maybe talk about some of the things that SB Council thinks either should be added or should be approved upon, it, whether in this legislation or just through the whole process of the Obamacare replacement to help small business owners? Well, the big piece really is the taxes and the mandates. Um, you know, we've heard a lot from our members about the employer, um, you know, the employer mandate, the complexity, the confusion with that, um, the big health insurance tax that, um, you know, hit. it was really the biggest tax increase uh, in the Obamacare bill, the Affordable Care Act, was the health insurance tax. Essentially, that tax health insurance companies, but they just passed it on to the small group market. So that means small business owners were getting hit by that uh, tax, which drove up um, or has driven up the cost of health insurance. The medical device tax, um, you know, most of, um, you know, we have med medical device manufacturers in our membership, um, and most of the, most of the uh, businesses uh, or companies in the sector is actually dominated by small businesses. And this mm -hmm. medical device tax was really a tax on innovation and their ability to compete, money to put back in their business that could lead to more, uh, uh, you know, to innovations uh, in this marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, it repealed um, the investment tax, on the Medicare tax, prescription drug tax, other uh, the med uh, the medicine uh, uh, what do you call it? the medicine tax, the uh, medicine box tax, um, uh, ellipse restrictions on uh, with HSAs in terms of over the counter medicines that you can use your HSA for over the counter uh, drugs. Um, what am I leaving out? Well, the employer and the individual mandate. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of taxes, close to one trillion taxes in this in, in this bill. So the tax piece repealing all of them, um, you know, we think is going to be helpful in terms of lift, lifting costs and burden on small businesses, not only on their compliance costs, but also on their health care costs. This big health insurance tax is really driving up costs. So that's one piece of it. The other um, is the improvement of um, health savings accounts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, strengthening those, making them a little bit more flexible, but the employer and the employee can contribute to them. Um, you know, that we think is, is very, very important, you know, for small businesses. Again, the flexibility and improving upon them so that more people and businesses can use them. Um, and then there's the tax, you know, credit piece is mm -hmm. establishing a refundable, advanceable tax credit um, as opposed to um, the subsidies in Obamacare. And essentially those tax credits are um, they're portable, they're uh, age-based, they're not income-based, which I think is more fair and it makes sense. Um, and they, for people that are currently using uh, the Obamacare subsidies um, and the premium tax credits, um, there will be a transition period. I do have to mention, though, that um, if you, um, you know, if you are buying insurance on the exchanges, that uh, you will be able to um, uh, uh, buy high deductible policies. There's new rules in there that will allow you to do things that you're currently prohibited from doing um, if you do have if you do purchase your insurance on the exchange. So those are some of the transitional pieces. Sure. Um, so I went through those real quick. Uh, if you want to hit on any of them. Individually, Christy, please feel free to do so. So, 
Yeah, so if you look at it as a score a scorecard, I know one of the big issues that they addressed was the mandates you mentioned. So they removed the both individual and employer mandate requiring that individuals purchase coverage and also requiring that employers with over 50 full-time employees provide coverage. Is that correct? That's correct. And then they still have a, so under Obamacare, there's a subsidy, but um, they change in this bill, they they get rid of the subsidy and make it a refundable tax credit, correct? So it's just, it's a different way of helping people afford health care. And uh, um, I do know, I know for self-employed people, this is probably important that they um, didn't, they kept certain things or for small business in general, they did ke- keep some of the popular provisions like um, insurance companies can't uh, decline new coverage based on pre-existing conditions. So there's that, that protection still uh, will still be allowed under the new replacement plan. Also, if you have a child, um, they could still stay on your plan up to 26 years of age. And then also they kept protections around limits to your health coverage, meaning um, you can't have gaps in coverage. So if you by chance, uh, you know, get sick and your healthcare costs start increasing, um, you know, an insurance company can't say to you, we only cover up to $100,000 and everything else is all on you. So they kept those protections, correct? That is true. Yes. Oh, great. Good. Okay. And then, go ahead. Go. And then um, about the, um, you know, for small business owners, there was a small business health tax credit. Are these tax credits available to small businesses too, or small business owners? Uh, the tax credit, the new tax credits. Right? Sorry, you're talking about. Are you talking about? Or are you talking about? So, are the refundable tax credits, credits available to the small business owner as well? Yeah. Okay, great. Great. To the self-employed, yes. Yeah. The, the thing, I mean, it does get rid of that small business tax credit, but I don't think many there people wasn't are going to miss that, that, Christy, that, to be honest with you. No, it really was a little useless and very complex uh, and too many restrictions on that. The other thing that, um, you know, I didn't mention is that it does uh, repeal the, the limits that were put uh, in Obamacare on um, contributions to FA, uh, flexible savings accounts. So the limit was 2,500 and, and that will go back to the original um, amounts, which I think were mm-hmm. anywhere, like five to $6,000, right? So it repeals those, repeals that limit that was put on there. And I know that was a big change that, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of business owners, you know, will be happy about or, you know, mm-hmm. other companies that use flexible savings accounts. Um, I see, I'm also going through my list to see if I missed Anything for any indoor any tanning tanners. salons out there? Uh-huh. <laughs> Part of our membership um, it also repeals the tax yeah. on indoor indoor tanning services. So there you go. Uh, you know, that was uh, I think one of the sectors besides the health insurance industry that was um, I think targeted. You know for a tax, yeah. but those get passed on. And what about like you know, other anyway. things? So. You know that you SB Council would like to see done to help with the affordability. Um, anything specific? I know we talked about, we've talked about health reimbursement arrangements or HREs, which are a great tool. Um, so can you share with the business owners watching other things that we're working on that might help them with the healthcare costs? Yeah, you know, I, it's gonna it's gonna take a while to get to a competitive marketplace. I mean, that's just, you know, the reality of it. and. You know, in, in my view, I think one of the things that, you know, both the, the Trump administration and the GOP leaders can be just very frank about, you know, is that, okay, the CBO, among other things, that said, well, there may be more uninsured people. You know, it did say that premiums were going to drop, you know, by 10% under their plan. But as you know, Christy, from our perspective, going, you know, yeah. just 10% lower than where we were, you know, eight years ago, that would just basically get us back to where we were before Obamacare. So we need drastic uh, and significant reductions in affordability in healthcare in order for, you know, small business owners and self-employed to really benefit from this bill. And, you know, that will come from a competitive marketplace, um, but that's not, that's not going to happen overnight. I mean, you know, disruptors, it's going to take them for a while. 
to get into the marketplace to have more insurance companies or more insurance products that's going to take time so i mean one of the things that we you know are, are advocating for is the um expansion um and allowing you know self-employed uh, uh s corp uh and um, partnerships uh you know to be able to use um health reimbursement reimbursement arrangements now during the latter part last year um under obamacare um they were eventually made illegal you're heavily fined uh, if you're a small business and you um you know funded uh an hra for your employee but at the end of last year we were able to get reinstated reinstated so now hras are back on the marketplace again but um they really do need to be expanded and for more self-employed and small business people yeah. uh, to be able to access them because as you know christy even if you're a business owner that provides hras to your employees you can't use it yourself that's sort of silly you know uh and it just doesn't make sense so we're uh, really pushing for changes we're trying to see if that could be done uh, from an administrative perspective or we're not quite sure if that can happen but they're looking at the rules but we are um, strongly advocating for that because again it's just something that's on the market right now where if just slight changes were made, it would give business well, owners Well, it's choices, not just the benefit um, to the immediate. business owners, but the benefit to small business, you know, employees in small businesses would be great in terms of the financial benefit of helping them exactly. pay for some of their healthcare costs. One of the great benefits of HRAs is that they're an easy, simple to use tool. So for many business owners who don't necessarily have a lot of the, you know, extra income to put into an HSA, they're a great tool to have to try and you know, deduct uh, healthcare costs and same thing for their workers. Once you put in an uh, HRA, the plan is non-discriminatory. Whatever amount you set as the amount you'd like to offer in a benefit for healthcare costs has to be the amount for everybody in your business, whether it be the owner or the employee. And so mm -hmm. it's a, you know, great way to help both cover the small business owner healthcare costs, but then all of the workers will garner the same benefit. And um, obviously, particularly right now, until we see some of the transition from all of the replacement plan efforts, um, it'll be a great benefit for a lot of people and small businesses and their workers to have some help paying for their healthcare costs. Right. And, and again, it's something right. And, and again, it's something we have to wait more um i'm getting, getting feedback here here we go that's something that we don't have to wait no it's not like sort of a new product that has to develop it's an existing product that can just be well you know it's more people can have access to it um if we do make those changes so um we are um we are pushing for that uh and uh, you know hopefully it's it's something that we can get through again having immediate choices you know, small business owners and entrepreneurs are not going to see this health care reform plan proposal or the enactment of this yeah. legislation as a success <laughs> unless it lowers costs and actually gives them more affordable choices in the marketplace. They can't wait four or five years, you know, for the market to develop to, be, to come yeah. up with up. You know, they need more choices now. And so, um, and so that, again, HRAs are one of the things that we really are sort of honing in on. Uh, and for you know, Congress and for the president. Great. So, you know, anyway. obviously there's just been a lot of coverage around um, some of the debate around the, the you know, House Republican leadership approach on replacing Obamacare. In your opinion, what are the next steps for, you know, the American Health Care Act and the other components of the replacement efforts? You know, will it will it all pass the House and what will happen once it gets to the Senate, in your opinion? Well, you know, it's uh, it's interesting because the you know, those who have been, you know, most opposed and it's really it's an interesting dynamic because you have, you know, very, very conservatives, I guess, on the, you know, the far right. Uh, and of course, um, there aren't that many, if any, Democrats, you know, who support this. But even though there's, uh, you know, been a lot of concern uh, expressed by the Freedom Caucus in the House uh, and the Republican Steering Committee, which are the more conservative caucuses within the House, 
um, as the bills, different bills or different pieces of the American Health Care Plan Act have moved through the Energy Commerce Committee and the Ways and Means Committee, um, there's been, they voted for it. <laughs> so, you know, you, so, um, but the, where we've only seen some um, of those members pull off um, has been in the budget committee and that the budget committee just um, met this morning. They had their votes and we had, you know, three of the more conservative members who, have, who pulled off of this. You know, my guess is that uh, it's going to continue uh, the process and that's what Trump and that's what Ryan are calling it and the leadership, like this is a process. We have a bill. If you have ideas in committee, you know, throw some amendments in there. Let's talk about changes, right? So, um, you know, they, they look at it as a process. You know, I think at the end of the day, gosh, it's hard to go out there on a limb on this, but I think it's going to pass. I do think it's going to pass the House. They're obviously going to lose some uh, Republican members. They're not going to get that much or, or any Democrat uh, support. But then you're just going to have a whole different, um, you know, a, a different, maybe a little bit of a different approach for sure over on the Senate side, because some of the senators have been very vocal um, about it. Um, and particularly uh, the Medicaid piece, you know, and how that impacts the states that they're from. They're concerned about how that's going to work. Um, and uh, and the other uh, big thing is, I mean, they're really looking at the numbers to see, geez, it's really something that is going to be um, negative in my state. Are people going to yeah. lose insurance or are they going to gain from insurance? I think a lot of them are very skeptical of the CBO report because it's not a dynamic report. It doesn't take, it really, um, Lately on the Obamacare estimates, they've been pretty bad, <laughs> actually, the CBO. I mean, they estimated that uh, in 2016 that, you know, 26 million, um, you know, new people would be in, uh, individuals would be newly insured in the individual market. Um, you know, that number is really mm -hmm. off. It's 10 million currently. So I think they're really, they're talking a lot to their constituents back home, talking to their governors back home I got about this Medicaid piece. But I do think it's going to look a little bit different um, on the Senate side. Sure. It's very hard to make a prediction, to be honest with you. Really hard. Um, I do see some momentum though shifting back to the Republicans' favor. Um, you know, I've been in these debates a long time, over 20 years, seen some of these healthcare debates, seen some of these tax debates, you know, and just when you think something is totally dead, um, it comes back to life yeah. and passes and goes to the president's desk. Yeah. Remember, that was the case with Obamacare, if you remember. Yeah. You know, like everyone thought the thing was dead. Um, and it actually, um, you know, there was an, a renewed push. Um, and actually, President Obama did sign that bill, the Affordable Health Care Act. So um, I do think uh, something will pass. I think something will get to the president's desk. Um, it's again, it's going to, it's mm -hmm. going to change. Though, well, I mean, just from the small itself. business owner perspective, um, you know, the current trajectory is just not sustainable. I mean, you know, when it comes down to the bottom line, cost is so critical and, you know, healthcare costs, just the insurance costs, premiums continue to keep going up and up and up that at some point, you know, people just can't afford it. Business owners like me just cannot afford, um, you know, the constant increases in, in premium coverage. So definitely something you know, needs to be done to address it, because at what point do you get a critical mass of people that just are opting out of the insurance system because they just they, they have no options or can't afford the coverage that's offered to them? Yeah. And. You know, there was, uh, as you know, from the small business community and, and self-employed um, and, you know, the mid-sized business community, um, yeah. this was a huge issue during the campaign. Um, and, you know, but now, you know, that there's actually legislation taking place and things are moving, um, you know, I think it, if you really care about this issue, if you're a small business owner uh, and if you want to see changes, um, wherever you might stand on it. But I, I do think most small business owners, I mean, the costs, as you said, are unsustainable and there needs to be changes. But this really is the time right now to weigh in, you know, with your, your House member um, and with your senators because um, they're hearing from a lot of special interest groups. There's ads running, you know, from special interest groups who may not be inside their districts. 
Uh, so if you're, you know, a business owner, um, it is time really to sort of let your voice be heard and let them know how you feel about the American Health Care Act, how you feel about some of these various pieces that we're working on, whether it's association health plans or medical liability reform or shopping across, you know, state lines in order to find a health insurance plan um, that meets your needs to have that competition in the marketplace. So um, it's, it's really vital that you do weigh in, call your house or senator, 202-225-3121, contact them online. I mean, they really do have a way if you email them to see if you are a constituent from their district and it's a legitimate um, uh, expression, you know, of concern. Um, about the legislation or support the legislation. Well, thanks so much, Karen, for trying to dissect this with us. It, we know that it's complicated and there's so much information out there that it can be challenging for a business owner to understand what's going on, what impacts me, how does this all work? So I think you shed a lot of light on the approach and, and what are the proposals that are currently moving through the House right now. Um, and, you know, making moves to help address the issue of Obamacare replacement. Uh, again, as Karen mentioned, it, this is the time for you small business owners out there to make your voice heard. Um, contact your members of Congress, particularly in the House right now, about your thoughts on health reform and the replacement of Obamacare. You can please keep up to date with what's going on with SBE Council. You can sign up for our e-news by going to sbecouncil.com. Org, so you can stay up to date with what pieces of legislation and what proposals are being put out there and moving through Congress around health reform. Also, please follow us on Facebook and Twitter at SBE Council. Um, we do we host Small Business Insider Live every week, every Thursday at 1.30. So we hope you come back and join us. And if you have any ideas, any suggestions, um, any topics you'd like to see covered, or if you have questions about what's going on with Obamacare repeal and replacement, don't hesitate to reach out to contact us at SB Council. Thanks again, Karen, for your time. Oh, thank you. And and remember, sign up for our e news, and you know we'll have and, and check our website. We got a lot of information about what's in the act, all the tax uh, repeal pieces, um, and and all the changes as well. So thank you for joining us. Thank and we look you, everyone. To you joining us again.